Thank you very much for these. I want to thank you for taking time to see me today. Chuck Jones. Oh, sorry. So I watched all your masks in Dallas. Well, hi, guys. Thanks so much. Bill Tatum. Bill Tatum. Pleasure to see you. Good to see you. So, Mr. President, I'll be out there waiting for you. I'll be waiting for you. All right. Bye, Gally. You need this back here? Okay, you may have that. Keep it fine. Okay, yeah. right? We'll know where you are. Thank you so much. Let me get my car. I should. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Look at it. Oh, yeah. I want to take one behind the desk. Let me give you this. Can I? Sure. Yeah. Like I did before. <laughs> Okay. Oh, you won't be sitting down. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Used to play football against him. Yes, in England, sir. Former yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Well, nice to see you. My boss. Well, my to see you. Well, nice 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 to see you. National Guard, we'd like to thank you for what you've done for the Guard and also for our country. We'd also want to like to thank you for putting respect back in this uniform. And I'm looking for an officer to meet the best president to explain this. Uh, Mr. President, in 1972 in San Francisco, you kindly assisted us in presenting this award to a great American, Mr. Bob Hope. And on that occasion, he made the comment the opportunity to say that this put him one up. <laughs> <laughs> we are privileged today to resolve that difference. And on behalf of the National Guard Association of the United States, representing some 56,000 officers all over America, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and Guam, in deep appreciation for your support of a strong military, it is our pleasure to present you this award, which is unique, and we certainly hope that you will enjoy having it, and we sincerely appreciate all you're doing to keep America strong. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Well, listen, thank you very much. Well, I think that's a very remarkable display. Thirteen colonies and the uniforms for each. Now, this would be the wrong place for me to tell that whole story, wouldn't it, about uh, the man 
stood up in front of his troops, the general, and said, I lost my toy soldiers and I cried and my mother said to me, don't worry, someday you will find them. And he said, and now I have. <laughs> 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 This is the plaque that, that goes with us in the war. And uh, the life that we used to be. Well, I'm more honored than I can say. I'm more grateful. Thank you. And very proud of the garden. It's back where it should have <laughs> Should have always been. We appreciate your response. Thank you very much. Out of there and play with them. Oh, <laughs> thank you, sir. Good to see you. Good to see you. Bye, sir. Hey, good to see you. Thank you for everything, sir. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Twelve year old won his school basketball game with a basket. He's already to the tunnel vision stage. And he did it by looking at the floor and up engaging his shot that way and then shot one game. It was called Hutch. You didn't have anything else to do, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I understand they want a picture of us sitting down over here. Come, come in. Take the, take the chair over there. Thank you. And I'll be behind you. Excuse me. And uh, well, thank you very much for those books. I appreciate that. I can say, Mr. President, I have to say very much that you took. Well, well, I'm pleased that uh, you've done it and appreciate very much our mutual friend Alan Brown uh, getting in touch with you. Who is looking for? Or looking to do something before I? 
everybody. I think no one on the side for the country. It's a great honor, I know, for Matt and his family to have you here, but we have some other very special people here also, uh, the people who really made all this possible, Mr. and Mrs. Caulfield, and of course, Pat, and I was going to say, with the four children, her fire team. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then I arrived and I realized it was a battalion. <laughs> <laughs> now, you all know, you all know Matt well. In fact, I would be presumptuous to to try to tell you about Matt Caulfield. Let, let me tell you a little bit about the Marine Corps and Matt Caulfield. I think you all know that uh, right across the river we have a very famous statue. A statue that uh, by putting together a little marble and brick and mortar and bronze, we captured a very important moment in the history of our country. A moment that proved that uh, brave men working against overwhelming odds can accomplish any mission provided they had the right spirit and dedication. Now what you probably haven't noticed is that the last man in the queue, Private First Class Ira Hayes, an American Indian, his hands are not touching the pole. They're reaching. And that's the greatness of the country that we live in and the greatness of the Corps that Matt and I serve. Because the country that the President leads, and when people ask us why we go to Lebanon and why we go to Granada, it's because if this country is to be a great country, it must always reach beyond its grasp. And that's what Private First Class Ira Hayes is, is doing at our statue. And that's what a, uh, a young officer, named Matt Caulfield, has done since 1958. He has always reached beyond his grasp. All people ask me, they ask Matt, what is it that makes a Marine different? And that's a hard thing to describe. How does one describe love of family, love of country, love of wife? But it's that same kind of love. And I think that we also have realized that even in a day of, of high technology and of fancy equipment, that the true heritage of our core belongs to people. They make the organization, not equipment. Because equipment, machinery, doesn't have a heart, doesn't have a soul, and uh, really doesn't care whether it's going to the moon or to Timbuktu. If it quits, it quits. But Marines like Matt Caulfield have big hearts and they have very big souls. And they do care whether they're going to the halls of Montezuma or the shores of Tripoli because they'll never quit. Now, I can tell you all about Matt Caulfield, a soldier, statesman, all about his academic credentials and their many all about the great staff jobs that he's had, which is epitomized right here by working for the President of the United States, our Commander-in-Chief. But Matt Caulfield's greatest hours were spent as a Commander of Marines, as a Company Commander twice, a Marine Detachment Commander, and also as a Battalion Commander. And while today we are honoring a very special individual, who will be soon 
wearing the stars of a Brigadier General in the United States Marine Corps, that when that last volley is fired, Matt, and that last bugle is blown, Matt Caulfield's legacy will not be the stars that he wears on his shoulders. Matt Caulfield, the leader, the follower, Matt's legacy to his country will be the thousands of young people that he has touched with his genuine, warm, compassionate <coughs> leadership. And there are literally in our country today thousands of young Americans who are far better, far better for our country, whether they're in uniform today or, or out of, for having served under Matthew P. Caulfield. Would you please read the order, sir? Attention to orders. Department of the Navy, Headquarters, United States Marine Corps, Washington, D.C., April 18th, 1985. From Commandant of the Marine Corps to Colonel Matthew P. Caulfield, United States Marine Corps. Subject, authority to assume the title and wear the uniform of a Brigadier General, U.S. Marine Corps. By the authority vested in the Commandant of the Marine Corps, you are hereby authorized to assume the title and wear the uniform of a Brigadier General, U.S. Marine Corps, effective this day. Signed, P.X. Kelly, General, U.S. Marine Corps. I'll ask Matt to raise his right hand, and I will give this to you, Matt, to signify your acceptance by saying You, Brigadier General Matthew P. Caulfield. I, Matthew, Brigadier General Matthew P. Caulfield. Solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution. Solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution. Of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I am about to enter, so help me God. I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office to which I'm about to enter, so help me God. shared in this moment, and that's an internal family problem on how you get it from her. <laughs> you know, I don't mean to get anyone in trouble here, and uh, yet I can't help but tell in this marine atmosphere, uh, a little something that happened the other day when General Kelly and the rest of the uh, chiefs of staff were in giving me a briefing on each branch of the service in the cabinet room. And, uh, sitting at the cabinet table and it came General Kelly's turn and he was up there and he was telling about the uh, great improvements in uh, amphibious landings and so forth, and landing barges and all of that. And I'm surrounded by Marines here. It's, a, it's an awful place for an ex-horse cavalry officer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my Chief of Staff, Don Regan, the Secretary of State, George Schultz, the Secretary of the Treasury, Jim, Baker, my national security advisor, Bud McFarland, all ex-Marines. And uh, now you won't hold this against him, but while you were giving that exposition there on all of the improvements in this, Bud slipped me a note, true Marine fashion. I read it. <laughs> and it said, we really don't need all that. Marines can walk on water. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Uh, I did uh, just want to say something. I, I rehearsed it for two weeks, Mr. President, but it's very warm. <laughs> <laughs> it's very warm here, and I'm going to make it very, very brief. Uh, but just to express my appreciation to my father, uh, a person who never had the opportunity to go to high school, who is the most well-read and uh, best educated person I've ever met. My mother, who uh, I just could never find words to express. Both of them taught me what integrity meant long before I discovered it was the hallmark of a Marine officer. My wife, Pat, who I've been in love with for since we were 17 years old, who uh, during the dark days of my career was the one that really encouraged me to stay with it. And in all the separations and the, the bad days, uh, four children, uh, Tricia, who just uh, graduated from the University of California, Berkeley, just returned from two years with the Peace Corps in Ecuador. Uh, Sue Ann, a senior at the University of California, Berkeley. Matt, a graduate of the University of California, Davis. And Danny, who just won a Navy ROTC scholarship to the University of Southern California. So the call fields happen to be from New York, but as you can see, we know where to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> the other person, sir, is uh, I'd like to say something, is Ed Hickey, who I've only known for two years. But Ed, uh, in terms of loyalty to you and to the presidency and doing things right, uh, has no peer, even in the, the Marine Corps, where we, we pride ourselves on a, a revere motto of Semper for Dallas. Ed's hidden strength and secret is something that you probably don't even know, is that his mother's maiden name is Caulfield. <laughs> 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 Lastly, sir, I would like to say something to you, and uh, it's very difficult, and I know it's hot, and I'll make it very fast. And it's difficult because it, there's deep meaning. A long time ago as a captain, I asked once a very eminent military historian, who were the greatest military leaders in our history? And he replied, Robert E. Lee and Mike Matthew B. Ridgeway. He said, because they were such extraordinary leaders that somehow they touched the soul of their army. I really believe that's what's been going on in the rebirth of our armed forces in the past four years. You were a commander in chief, probably the only commander in chief in history, that has touched the essence of what we're all about. And what it amounts to, Mr. President, is armies are what soldiers believe. You believe in us, and that's why we believe in you. I hope a historian someday captures this and its importance to the future of the security of the United States. But I do know that no words will ever express what it means to my generation, to those who fought in Vietnam who, and who came home and who kept the faith when it seemed that the nation was losing it. I'll never forget, burned in my memory was that day in the rotunda of the Capitol, standing behind you as a member of your staff, when the unknown from Vietnam was brought home. And it was so fitting that the president, the commander in chief, who believed in him, was the one that welcomed him home. That same historian told me uh, in those days that I could be a general officer someday. And I didn't believe him, but he told me the way you did it, and the secret was you watch great leaders and you try to emulate them. And I've watched you as closely as I could. And from that day of you standing with us in the rain at uh, Camp Lejeune and at other things, it seems a shame that all of your achievements, you weren't also a Marine. And Mr. President, I can't pay a higher compliment. What you've done for my family today and uh, for me, uh, we appreciate it very, very much. Thank you, sir. <laughs>
training and part of the general. And I know the general said, don't you know what this means? And the kid said, no, and he says, I'm a general. And the kid says, well, you keep that job. It's sure better than being a private. <laughs> Bless you all. Congratulations again. Thank you, Mr. President. Very pleased to be a part of this. Oh, I, I can't tell you what it means to my family and, and to me, sir. Great. Good day, sir.